So there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube that talk about keyword research, but what happens after we do keyword research? What do you do with a list of 100, 200, sometimes 300 plus keywords? How do you organize yourself? What comes first? What keywords should have their own content and which ones should instead become sections inside of another main keyword? Well, we're gonna cover all of that in today's video. Before we get into that, if you guys have been thinking about getting my SEO course this Black Friday, there's gonna be a $100 discount on the course and if you miss that on Monday, Cyber Monday, there's going to be a $75 discount. So it's definitely the biggest discount of the year. All the details are going to be in the description. So on to the first question. I've just finished doing a bunch of keyword research. I have this massive list. What do I do first? So the first thing I'd focus on is organizing those keywords into different buckets. So I like to mentally have at least three different buckets. Bucket. So the first bucket is that main keyword, that homepage bucket, right? I want to find a maximum of three solid keywords that we can target in the long term with our homepage, right? We know that our homepage is going to be one of the main sources of backlinks over time. So we want that homepage to rank for our brand, but also for competitive keyword that has traffic. So that's the first bucket. So the second bucket is the landing page slash static page bucket, right? So this is where we need to take a step back and really think about our business. This is also most likely going to be that largest bulk of initial keywords that we find. So for a service business, for example, we're going to have to think of all the different services that we're offering and all those different use cases. If we're in e-commerce, we're going to be thinking about all the different category pages that we need to build for our products and also subcategory pages if that's relevant. If we're a SaaS, we're also most likely going to be thinking about use cases, but we're most likely also going to have feature pages with relevant keywords that also have traffic. If we're in local SEO, we're probably also going to be talking about all the different services that we offer, as well as all the different locations that we have for our business. What I recommend for this bucket is to find that service, that location, that feature, whatever you're targeting, find that main keyword, and then add in some keyword variations to those pages, right? That way you're organizing all the different keywords that you found into their own little space. Later on in this video, we're also going to be talking about how we identify a main keyword versus a keyword that can sit as an H2 or as a different section in our content. Now, the third bucket is going to be our blog, right? So these are keywords that should be quite easy to distinguish since most of the results for these keywords are going to be long form content. And a lot of these keywords will have high informational intent, right? So the main thing here is we're going to have a solid group of keywords for our blog where we can start posting consistent, high quality content. So over time, this is what our content strategy will turn into. It will live off of our blog. Now let's talk about priorities. Now that we have all these different buckets, we've organized our keywords a little bit. Let's talk about what goes first. So the first thing we're going to focus on is that homepage. We want to get that out of the way. We want Google to see it right away and we want it to be perfectly optimized in terms of on page. We want to place those keywords that we talked about in all the right places places if we can in the H1, maybe in a couple H2 headings and definitely throughout the content on that homepage. Number two, we want to focus on those static pages, right? Those landing pages that we talked about, about all the different services that we're offering. So these are pages that are targeting keywords that are much lower in the funnel and they're going to bring in users that are much more likely to convert. Now, why do we go through these two first? Well, we want to get these pages out as soon as possible when we're starting out. We need to ensure that these important pages are being seen by Google and they're being indexed as as soon as possible. Again, both of these pages are going to bring in the highest quality of traffic, and then we can focus on the blog, right? The blog is always something long term that we build over time that we want to be consistent with. I always recommend at least one blog post a week. So as a side note, guys, I do want to say that we need to focus on what's working first. And what I mean by that is we need to do a very solid competitor analysis while we're doing keyword research to see what's working for our competitors, right? When we're starting out, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We can reinvent the wheel once we've found what works for our competitors, apply that to our website. And we've now reached the point where we have a solid amount of organic traffic coming in. Once we have that, then we can get creative and think about how we can differentiate ourselves from our competitors. But at the start, guys, focus on what's working, see what's working for your competitors and try to improve that on your website. So now let's talk about how we can identify main keywords. So what I mean by this is, does a keyword deserve its own piece of content or does it belong inside another piece of content, maybe as a section, as a heading, or even as an FAQ? If you're using Ahrefs to do your keyword research, then you're most likely familiar with this parent topic column, right? And this will give us a really good indication 
indication of whether or not a keyword deserves to have its own content or whether instead it should be part of another piece of content. So if we take a look at this example right here, again, that keyword vegan brownie recipe, it falls under that parent topic of vegan brownies. Vegan brownie recipe, easy. Again, it's a very, very similar keyword. So we can see that quite easily that also falls under that same parent topic. But when we're taking a look at that gluten-free vegan brownie recipe, we're now talking about gluten-free. That's a whole topic of its own that will have its own parent topic. So that's a pretty good indication of two separate parent topics. So two separate pieces of content that I would create if I was in this specific niche. Now, let's say that I don't have access to Ahrefs. How do we decide? It's obviously quite hard to give recommendations here since there's so many different variations of things that can happen, but here's a few general rules, right? Let's say I have a group of similar keywords. What I would first do is think of this specific scenario. So let's say that I had to write a thousand words of content for all the different keywords that I have in this group of similar keywords. Would that content overlap? How similar would would it be? If that content is very similar, then that means that that keyword probably should not belong on its own. Instead, we should create one big article with all of those keywords. If the content does not overlap, then it's pretty clear that that keyword belongs on its own. So again, that example of vegan brownie recipe versus easy vegan brownie recipe, those two pages of a thousand words of content would be very similar, but gluten-free brownie recipe versus easy brownie recipe, those would be very different types of content since again, I have that differentiating factor which in this case is gluten-free. Another thing that I like to do to decide if a keyword is a main keyword or not is I like to take that group of similar keywords and see the results page for all of those keywords. If those pages are very similar, then again, we can probably bunch all those keywords together into one big article. But if they're different, then there might be an argument there for creating separate articles. Now, once we've decided to bunch up all those keywords together, how do we find that H1? How do we find that main keyword in that group of very similar keywords? keywords. The main thing that I do here is, is I try to find the one with the highest volume that is obviously tied with the one that makes the most sense for the content that we want to produce. We're always thinking of relevance, even though volume is obviously very important. With the other keywords that are similar, we're then going to sprinkle those keywords out into different sections of our articles in H2s and H3s and also in FAQs if we can use structured data. Highly recommend all of that. Now, it obviously might not be as easy as that. You might have to make a judgment call here, but if you're doubting between a group of very similar keywords, then it most likely means that those keywords are too similar to create their own piece of content. If you're struggling with this, then definitely leave a comment down under this video and I'll try to help you guys out. Now, if you guys liked this video, I highly recommend you guys check out this one. And again, guys, Black Friday sale is on for this Friday and Cyber Monday for next Monday. Check the link in the description for all the details. Thanks for sticking till the end, guys. I'll see you in the next one.